Now you remember the way IgG activates the classical pathway of complement, and that you need a fair bit of IgG on the cell before on average you can get C1Q going. What happens when we're dealing with IgM? So IgM, you will remember, is a pentamer. Let's draw it now. Here's IgM binding to an epitope, and here's the rest of the IgM molecule. Right? So the important thing is that this IgM molecule always has five FCs um, together in, this, uh, in one molecule. Can't help that uh, from the way it's made. And therefore, one single IgM molecule is capable of interacting with C1Q if that IgM is bound to, uh, to an antigenic epitope here. Uh, so there's enough structural change in the IgM that it is now able to interact with C1Q. That then, uh, as you remember, goes on to activate um, C4, C, uh, C2, C3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Um, but the important point is that one IgM can do it. So IgM is, on average, 500 times more um, um, active at activating complement by the classical pathway than is IgG. And because of this, it perhaps isn't surprising to you that when you um, first put a new antigen into a person or experimental animal, the initial response, the one that comes up quite early, maybe as early as two days, and then goes down fairly quickly, is IgM. And then, uh, for most antigens, after some time, there's a switch, and then you switch to IgG, and the IgG can go higher in concentration and last longer. Um, this is pretty typical. The question would be, well, if IgM is so fabulously good at activating complement, why do we bother to switch? Why don't we just make IgM? It's the best antibody of all. And I'd like you to think about that, and in the next video, we'll discuss why we need to switch.